Welcome to our review on metals and non-metals. So what we're going to do in this little review video is have a look at the difference between chemical and physical properties and also have a look at some of the basics on the periodic table. So first thing we actually need to do is understand what a physical property actually is. So whenever we're talking about physical properties or when you're asked about a physical property on the exam paper, you need to be talking about a characteristic that can be observed or measured. And when we compare metals and non-metals, what we find are that these physical properties do vary. So in the table in the middle there, what you can see are the different physical properties and what they actually are for metals and what they are for non-metals. So in terms of basic appearance, metals are shiny, whereas non-metals tend to be dull. Melting points and boiling points for metals, they're usually high, but for non-metals, those are usually low. If we look at the state at room temperature, virtually all metals are solid, whereas the non-metals half are solid and half are gas. If we consider if they're malleable or brittle when solid, metals are malleable, which means you can bend them without them shattering, whereas non-metals are brittle, so if you hammer on it then it's going to shatter. We look at metals, they're ductile, which means that they can be pulled and therefore be used to make wires and so forth. Whereas non-metals are non-ductile, which means they're going to snap if you try and pull them too far. And then finally, the thermal and electrical conductivity. Metals tend to be good conductors, both of heat and of electricity, whereas non-metals tend to be poor conductors of both. Chemical properties then are very different in the fact that these are characteristics that can only be determined by studying the chemical reactions. It's not something you can just sit and look at a chemical sitting on the desk and suddenly know how it's going to do something. This is something we can only determine by studying the reactions it has with other chemicals. So one of these properties that we need to understand is that when we're talking about metals, they will lose electrons and therefore form positive ions and non-metals will be likely to gain electrons and form negative ions. If we're looking at both metals and non-metals, they have a similarity in how they react with oxygen because they will react to form an oxide. However, their properties are quite different. So if we try to dissolve our metal oxide in water, we're going to produce an alkaline solution. Whereas if we dissolve our non-metal oxide in water, we produce an acidic solution. So despite the fact that they both form oxides when they react with oxygen, the way that they then produce a solution when dissolved in water is different. So where do we find metals and non-metals on the periodic table? As you know, in the exam, you're going to have the data booklet, which will have a copy of the periodic table present. And when you look at it, you've got all of the metals on the left hand side. So as you're looking at the diagram in the middle there, they're all the green ones. On the right hand side are the non-metals, so those are the yellow coloured ones there. But we do have this small number of elements on the boundary between the metals and the non-metals that have properties both of metals and non-metals. And those are shown in that little blue section there in the diagonal. So hopefully at the end of this video, you know the difference between physical properties and chemical properties, and you can recall some of those key properties for both metals and non-metals. You should also be able to recognize where to locate metals and non-metals on the periodic table.